Call this meeting to order. Remember that, please? When more stuff in the elevator all the time down at the old bank. Don't be late. There's like Determine as a quorum president, Commissioner Wardlow, Commissioner Vasquez, Commissioner Nettleton, Commissioner Flores. Commissioner Nettleton, if you'd lead us in the pledge of allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> you ever stand up and get scared you're going to forget the word? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When I first came into office, I had to practice the night before. <laughs> 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 like, I'm going to forget this. <laughs> Approving or amending the minutes? Please. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton, second Commissioner Flores. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, five zero vote. Citizens' comments. Gabriel Zapata. Mr. Zapata, if you'd like to come up. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Gabriel Zapata. Uh, I am uh, a leader of the board organization and a member of the Moreno Valley Association. Uh, I, we are here this morning. Uh, as you all know, Moreno Valley uh, does not have any um, infrastructure, you know, uh, utilities or uh, water. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, we are uh, asking that the county take the same consideration uh, with uh, other projects going around, for example, the bridge line, as to uh, bringing in water into that area. <clears throat> that is my comment for this morning. I thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> That's the only one I had. Moving on to item six, approving subdivision plat. None. None. Approving certificates of compliance. None. Approving monthly reports from elected officials. Move. Second. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Vasquez. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero vote. Approving bills for payment. Move. I have a motion, Commissioner Flores. Second. Second. Commissioner Vasquez, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. 5-0 vote. Item 10. Recognizing Anna Markowski-Smith for 28 years of dedicated service as an elected official. Cameron, yeah, you said that you might not be coming. I thought, oh, okay, then I don't have to. I'll try to hold back the tears if you were going to be here. Huh? <laughs> you know I'm going to miss you. Uh, <laughs> I, I wasn't believable. <laughs> uh, yeah. In honor of your service, Honor Murkowski Smith, October 5th, 1992 to December 31st, 2020, retired with distinction from Boverty County after 28 years of excellence and dedication, service as a county attorney. Ms. Smith, if you'll come forward, we'd, I'd like a picture with all of us, if you don't mind. Who ordered the Janita? I want to make sure we're close here, that we were all in. Yeah. Yeah. Is Sonia working here? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're good. There we go. She said she wished she'd known I was going to come. <laughs> Stand straight and turn. Uh, that one. Straight. Straight. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? Not saying anything. The camera adds 20 pounds. So. <laughs> looks like I have four cameras on. <laughs> she just me. <laughs> started working for another paper. She got. It. <laughs> right there. Very nice. One more. Turn this way. She might do that either. Uh, she get a little shine from her head. <laughs> All right, let's see how you are. Thank you, Anna. Congratulations. Thank you. And they don't know about my marriage if this is going to turn on you. I made the motion. <laughs> right. How many years as assistant county attorney? Just one. One? <laughs> We had to amend the budget to give her, make room for her. Wow. <laughs> and it was the best day of his life. That's the best decision they ever made. Yeah. 
Why not? How long have you been there? Uh, don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> he started the county. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, back in 18... <laughs> Jerry, I was showing him this this morning. 28-year-old commissioner. Wow. What happened? Uh, <laughs> that way they can see. Can they see that? Can you see that? That's yeah. Martin Wardlow. <laughs> uh, he's 28 years old. Huh? Hey, uh, the, hair was, the hair was black to me. What did it black? I woke up this morning and I yeah, was wrong. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, oh, so our meeting goes like this. <laughs> Auditor's report. No. Second. A motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Flotis. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero vote. Uh, verification of revenue for this one here, Matt. <clears throat> Did you want to wait on this? Yeah, we'll push that to, to, to the end. Okay. <laughs> Budget adjustments to fund capital expenditure to include equipment on Thera Road. Uh, Same. Okay. Do you want to talk about this one? Do you wait when we should get back mm -hmm. to the back? Correct. Okay, we wait? Correct. Okay. We're moving right along. Budget adjustments. Human resource, $1,500 from travel and training to capital outlay. Move. A second. What are we buying? Yeah. Uh, you told me, but I forgot. Since we're moving to the old purchasing office, mm -hmm. we need to buy a left-handed desk for Nettie, because the one we have won't fit. Okay. okay, we have a motion. Commissioner Flutter, second okay. Commissioner Nettleton. All those in favor? All right. All right. All right. All right. Five zero vote. Uh, Treasurer's report. This is a good one. Move. Mm -hmm. Take it. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton, Second Commissioner Flores. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero vote. Uh, item 16, granting authority for the county judge to sign contract extension request for E-SHC <laughs> contract number 7219163 and accept an additional $25,000 in supplement funding <clears throat> with new end date of April 15, 2021. We keep getting this money because you're doing such a great job, right? Yes, sir. Uh, you can I'll take the praise. Yeah, go on. Good job. Thank have a motion, you, Commissioner Nettleton. Okay. And Commissioner Vasquez, all those in favor? Uh, right. And uh, Rob, thank you. You're thank welcome, you, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, if I may plan to see it on something else, if you'll indulge me for one minute. Um, I've been having problems finding funding to work inside the city of Del Rio. We have plenty of funding to work in Colonias. We're able to help a lot of people. Uh, we do have the Amy Young program, which is a $20,000 program to help people that are elderly and disabled in the city. We've done dozens of homes, but there's so many homes in San Felipe and other neighborhoods of Chihuahua that need more than $20,000. So the best program I can bring in is called the Home Program. It's also through TDHCA. The problem with that is the current rule requires a matching commitment from the local entity. And uh, I told Matt about it the other day. He encouraged me to talk to you all about it. I told him it was a 90-10 split. I'm, I'm correct on that. It's an 85-15 split. So let's just say a brand new home cost $100,000, the local entity would be on the hook for $15,000. And have you visited with the city about? I did in the past, uh, two or three times. I tried to get them interested in the program. They never wanted to pull me up the money. And uh, Matt thought that maybe I could talk with y'all and kind of see about maybe something like an interlocal agreement where perhaps the county maybe some kind of call a share. Bring it to dollar amount. I mean, if you, we just can't do an 85-15 split, and we don't know what the 15 is going to be the maximum. Yes, we need a dollar amount. I, I can tell you, just, just, just to let you know, that currently the houses in the program that are meeting the state requirements in, and along the coast area that have been built after hurricanes are wearing about $135,000 to build. that will meet all the state standards for insulation, energy efficiency, et cetera. And you, we would be helping who? Uh, any, it, it could be inside the city, it could be outside of the city, um, and basically it's a, it's a program that would demolish a house that cannot be repaired and build a brand new one. Um, so any, any citizen will bring us back the guidelines as to who exactly would be helping. Great. Great, great. We'll and then we'll, we'll make a decision. And we need a, do a maximum dollar amount. We just can't do 85, 15 split, and then you keep bringing us split. Sure, sure. <laughs> and should I reproach the city again? They, they, they yeah. turned me down a few times because they didn't want to fund with the money. I, I think you should. I mean, it, it is inside the city. It doesn't mean we won't participate, but I think they should participate. I mean, it's, it's so the house that would be replaced has to be uninhabitable? No, sir. In fact, it, it, it's supposed to be habitable. It's just not livable. It shouldn't be lived in. We should be tearing it down. Oh. It cannot Somebody repair. should be living there. 
Yes, sir. It's, it's an owner-occupied situation. It's not a rental. The, the owner-occupied, they're low income, 80% or below area median income. And the state's willing to pay, again, 85% of the money. And in return, they sign like a 15-year uh, forgivable loan where the family promises to live there for at least 15 years and they annually have money deducted from their, their loan until they finally own it at the end of 15 years. Is there a limit on this? I mean, as to how many uh, thousands of dollars you can use for this? Uh, this, this is a state program, right? Yes, sir. Th yeah. is, there, is this a five hundred thousand dollar program or a million dollars or what is it? Is there a limit there? I wish it was a paper contract program like the self help center. That way, we'd know exactly. Unfortunately, it's not. They're running on what's called the reservation system, which basically the state comes out with two million dollars and they put it out statewide based on the regional allocation formula. And then the border region is region eleven. They'll get us a rural urban split. Um, I believe there was around $500,000 in our rural split this year that just went out. I believe it all went to a CDCD out of Brownsville. Uh, but um, the, the urban money, which we're not urban, but it collapses after a month, we'd have another $500,000 we could go after. And then it, then it collapses by region until it's completely statewide. Wherever money's not being used in the panhandle or wherever, we would have access to. So I can't give you those exact because it's all based on possibility. If you're looking at just numbers, 500000 if we split it with the city, it'd be a 30 Thirty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. Good. If we were able to get all the yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Just wanted to find the seat. Appreciate it. Bring it back. Okay. COVID nineteen. Uh, they said if we call them about nine forty-five, I'm okay with that. Uh, <clears throat> presenting proposed Alberta County Animal Control Ordinance. I think y'all have y'all received that. Are we voting on this? Because this doesn't say vote. It just says presentation. Uh, we need to vote on it. Mr. Sir, are you all right with all this? Yes. Except the one change we discussed? Except the one change that I think uh, Anna made it yesterday. Yeah. And she sent out a new copy last night. And y'all are okay with it? The motion to approve. Thank you. Uh, the motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second. Second, Commissioner Wardlaw. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero vote. Uh, and I think on. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> and, and we're still set for February 1st, uh, sir? Uh, yes, sir. We're, we still need to make that one application to DEA uh, for medicine for medicine and stuff like that. But uh, we're, we're ready for that. And on these, I'll put an item on the agenda for the next meeting to discuss a kennel check because once... Uh, we start occupying that facility, then we're going to... We're going to need another person. We're going to need uh, uh, one or two part-timers to because through weekends, you know, animals, if there's any animals that are there, they're going to have to be fed. Uh, so it'll be... How many employees we have right now? We got three. Well, one of them's a deputy. Right. One of them's a deputy, and then we got two uh, animal control officers. So we're going to hire two more. Yes, sir. Hold on. It depends to the court, on the court. No, but no. yeah. So we'll, we'll need a a couple of kennel techs so they can rotate, you know, weeks. Of, uh, and I'm looking at it right now as a possibly a part time position. Uh, I'm being how's it going to be part time if you're having to run it 24 hours a day? Uh, <clears throat> so the kennel tech it'll take two to three hours to to uh, clean and feed, <clears throat> and then they're done. Mm -hmm. uh, the facility the you st we still have the other. The other three employees that will be out working, uh -huh. and you know, in the evening, somebody <laughs> has to go again and just to, to feed. So, and that's seven days a week. But they wouldn't be doing eight hours a day. That's not going to call them part time. Yes, sir. Yeah. You going to bring it back to court? Yes, sir. On the sixth. <clears throat> okay. Acquiring a vehicle for the local health authority, contract tracers. We had talked about this once before, and then we were getting prices, and then it just stopped. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got four tracers, a nurse, and a doctor. And they were asking if we could just get them one vehicle for all of them. That when, when they leave the office, they can, uh, they can use the vehicle versus using their own personal vehicle. Personal. Are we paying mileage or not? No. Why are we not paying mileage? One day, <clears throat> this, would, this would be cheaper, and they said if you'd give us a vehicle, they'd be happy. Because if we start paying mileage, like I said, you've got to 
four, five, five tracers, one nurse, uh, and a doctor. I understand. My concern is this, is we're, we're spending a lot of money, and they've made it very clear in Washington they're not going to give us any more money to assist with this, so we're pretty much on our own from this day forward. So when the money runs out, whenever that is, we're going to be funding this ourselves. That is correct. And uh, I'm, I'm concerned about the long-term cost to the taxpayers and where we're headed with this. I'm not saying we don't need it. I'm just <coughs> saying we need to. We have a but how much money are we talking about here? Did we get a price? Did we get something on that? I thought we got something on that. Here it comes, Governor. We're looking at about 30000 the vehicle that we were looking at back in the rules of the what kind of vehicle would it be in? Uh, we were just looking at a, a, a regular sedan. A thirty thousand dollar, like a Kia, something like that. Yeah. Is, is there any department out there that can lend them a vehicle? I mean, I've got one. I'm willing to lend them. Okay. Uh, okay. I mean, look at that would save us thirty thousand dollars, but I mean, you know. Okay. Well, let's go down that road first, then. Is that the <coughs> one that had hill damage? <coughs> Do oh, it's a charger. A charger. Brand new engine and everything. Yeah. We go down that road first. They weren't okay. using it much right now. I mean, they're more than welcome to use it. Okay. And that could provide their fuel also. The other thing on the <coughs> the city also, we were talking about it on COVID. We talked about it on this too. The city uh, last week voted to continue the funding for the uh, the tracers and the 50% of the doctor and all that uh, for six more months beginning January 1st. So, I, I'm just concerned since the federal government is apparently not going to assist with any more funding. Um, that seems to be we need to really kind of figure out how we're going to get this thing to work and fund. Yeah. We had uh, the, the court and y'all had really already set aside some funds to help the kids and couldn't. We weren't going to get any money, uh, and then I guess when we go to go through the next budget year, uh, that's the one that's going to sort of be a little bit strange. Oh no! Come on, surely this will be over by then. <laughs> <laughs> we just had that conversation with Matt. I told him no. Got there. Yeah, we got that. We got ninety-three. Yeah. Okay, so we'll get a. Gus, if you'll get us a car, that'll work. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, item 20, discussing from the Federal Road uh, project materials. We have the uh, base material. Well, we have recycled material that has asphalt in it. Come on. First, and then we uh, I think the base material or the base material we were going to use on uh, Alcoa Field, and then on. Uh, the soccer fields themselves, and, and we have a grant for our co-op field. Maybe we can hire somebody or something as that material's coming in to be working it, but it doesn't take time away from us uh, as soon as the project starts. The, if there's more material left over, more material left over out of the base material, uh, you know, I, I guess we just stockpile it, and then y'all figure out who's going to get it or who wants it. Joe. The other, yes, sir. Go ahead. No, go ahead. The other deal, I guess when they first start, we were talking about taking out 2,000 linear feet, right, at a time? Uh-huh. Between 2,000 and 3,000 linear feet. Mm -hmm. So that, those plans have not been approved by Textile yet? Not yet. Okay. But they're going to be talking about doing, <clears throat> grinding out the asphalt first, and on about 2,000 to 3,000, we don't know yet, mm -hmm. uh, the linear foot. Uh, but... How are we going to do with that material? What are we going to do with that one? All the uh, asphalt <coughs> recycle material, I'm going to need it for a rich line road. The one that I'm running the water right now, the water extension, I need all the material for that road. And yeah. The road's a mile and a half, two miles long. The only, the only thing with that is also, though, I don't know whether all the other precincts might need material also. I don't know if they do or if well, they can always use material. I mean, you know, the taxpayers are having to pick up the tab for this, so I guess it should be split up. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And I guess the question would be is, does anybody else need material? I need some material, Judge. <coughs> Martin? <coughs> Always. Okay. Do y'all want to stockpile it there at the baseball field and we'll figure out how to do it up? I'm fine with that. We do that? I'm fine with that. Okay. And then if, if y'all don't need it, uh, Commissioner Flores does have all of Ridgeline. Mr. Gus, how much would you need it for Ridgeline? I would need it all, to be honest with you. It's a, it's a long road. I mean, it's not a couple of bucks or a hundred feet or anything like that. Okay. Well, let's do this. Uh, we'll split it four ways, and any of y'all that don't need it, if y'all will get with the other commissioner to figure out if they need it. That work? Do it. <clears throat> Item 21, approving county's membership to ports to plans. Mm -hmm. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second. Second, Commissioner Vasquez. All those in favor? Aye. 5-0 vote. Approving interlocal agreement with the Regional Public Defender's Office Local Government Corporation. This is the one that we do to love it for our capital. Motion to approve. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second. Second, Commissioner Vasquez. All those in favor? Aye. 5-0 vote. Determining amount needed for tax note and certificate of obligation. We've had several discussions. <coughs> One of the some of the stuff that comes to mind is the is the 1.7 million for Frontera, and again we're not we don't need to decide today whether we're going to do a tax note or certificate of obligation. Uh, we can get Mr. Villasenor to come in and, and you know try to give us some plans, and then we'll make the decision. But we do need more or less a dollar amount that way he has something to get started with. Uh, the dozers, what was the final number on the dozers? Seven hundred thirty thousand. Okay. So we got one point seven. What was that? Seven hundred thirty thousand. So we've got one point seven, seven hundred and thirty. Uh, we keep talking about the radios and the towers and, and stuff like that. So uh, in order to fix our part to where we would not, if something was to go wrong, we'd have the capability to stay operational. I think that dollar amount was 461,000, Chair. Something like that, yes, right? <clears throat> and then uh, we had some, we have some matching money on some on some projects, but I think we could absorb those within the budget. That shouldn't be a problem. I know that there's some equipment. Did you get us a price on the equipment? Yes. Should be about 750, 800 pounds. For uh, there was two. I, I said two, but I think there was three. Uh, I think it would be the chipping machine, the chip spreader, right, and all the 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 late 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 late. chipping machine. But but I got one for an, an asphalt paver um, from Cooper Equipment. They don't carry Lee Boyd, but they have. You should have the one that I got for Lee Boyd with 186,000. That was 186,000. Yeah. I don't I don't have that one. He just has to get me uh, to get the the vendor for Ronco. But he said to to budget about 215. For oh, CP, the for, for the asphalt paper from Cooper. Okay. And then the oil distributor? The oil distributor would be about 190000 And then check for another $400,000 for $200,000. So we're sitting somewhere around 650000 should cover it then. So I would probably say closer to seven and just be on the safe side. But yeah. Okay. Uh, Brother, let's see. We can talk about it here. One of the other things on item 26 where we're talking about, uh, let's do this. Let's jump to item 26 real quick to figure out if we're going to do this. If, if we are, then we bring up, come back to Shanksi, which is how we're going to find it. Through. Item 26, considering honesty, conversion, and account uh, designation. Uh, We've been dealing with this for two years, and I think that some of the concerns that the commissioner had and commissioners have had is uh, it, once we jump into this, uh, who's going to manage it? Who's going to make sure that all the information gets put on it? And at the end of the day, uh, that way we just don't have to keep coming back to the court as to, well, so-and-so acting like a bunch of kids and putting stuff on it. Uh, spoke with Judge Cadena. He has no problem uh, managing. managing it. Managing it. Uh, <clears throat> the cost to, for this would be the like the 1.3 million. I think spread out over three years. It's what the plan that they gave us. And then 
uh, it would be 171 a year after that. Is that, is that over what we currently pay? No, uh, the 171 is not. Because I know we're paying cost right now. Correct. Yeah, it, it, it's going to double the cost uh, on an annual basis. Uh, and I believe around 151 is what this, this contract is quoted. Okay, what do you mean? How much are we currently paying for all of these Roughly things that we're going to eliminate? About 68. That is for EDOC, IDOC. EDOC, IDOC, uh, various closer to other. Closer to 80. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it would be 80 minus the, what are we? 151. 151, so we're about $60,000 more annual, $71,000. Okay. On top of where we're at. Where we're at. On top of where we're at, yes. And. You know, my concern is, is, is the management of it because the only reason our fire system works is they'll manage it mm -hmm. and make sure people use it correctly and do what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. A program like this, I mean, we already see it with EDOC and IDOC. Some people share, some people don't. It's, just, it's a nightmare. So mm -hmm. somebody's going to have to, to, to manage how that everybody is using it correctly, that, that information is being shared correctly. Otherwise, it is a complete a waste of time. If we're going to do what we're currently doing, I agree. so um, that was my biggest concern. That you said that I, I visited with him a little while ago, and like I told him, it, it, it can't be Matt, can't be me, can't be Judge Gonzalez. It needs to be somebody a little bit higher up on the food chain when it comes to the judicial part. Okay, and that would be him. And maybe um, he can put together a, a, a <clears throat> something similar to what we did—a policy on how it's going to be used, with the training, and, and then what happens if you don't use it. The way it's supposed to be used. Okay. Period. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to get into what we have now. Okay. Where some people are sharing information and some people are not sharing information. I mean, I, I can, if that's what we're going to go to, we can just save $1.3 million all going about business. Correct. The other deal that we had talked about, I think uh, you have a program sheriff that is VISTA that, that, that goes into your CIS. Make sure all my acronyms are right. Right. So all that, uh, uh, first, that's another program also that we have. This right here, uh, the state would have a module in order to be able to get into this to make sure that what we're reporting is right. And that right there would help us on our grants because we have to be over 90%. Yeah, the CR43 uh -huh. has to be over 90%. 90 that we're reporting on. And this would help with this. And I think right now we're a little over $3 million of grants that are tied into that. that that's correct. And, and on the annual maintenance side, it, it's not really apples to apples because the, the currently what we have now is, is on site. We have to provide security. We have to provide the, uh, the hardware. The, uh, the Odyssey is going to be cloud based. They're going to provide the security. They're going to provide and the maintenance. They should save us some money on the hardware. Ramp. That should save what us some money. What Ramon said was that every three to five years, depending on the equipment, the 70 some odd thousand dollar difference, we would be spending that times three, every three to five years. So in reality, uh, it's pretty much a wash. Uh, we have some programs right now that are coming up in a couple of years that he estimates that we'd end up spending 350 some odd thousand dollars. Which that we won't have to spend the 350. He says going into this, you're probably going to be about half of that, uh, and then you start uh, weeding them out. The the thing behind this one is is that it is cloud based. Uh, the security they they're saying that they could. If we were to have a major catastrophe, have just they could have us back up within 24 hours, and they update uh, or not update, but. Uh, Check the information and back up the information every couple of hours. Uh, where we're doing that among, with our own equipment here, but the technology and the help that we would have with Odyssey compared to EDOC or IDOC is it, it, just it's totally different. Like you said, we can't compare apples to apples. So if we do this, this will be the only program we have. There won't be anything else related to this. I, I mean, related. For for case management, prosecutors, um, in order to adjust system. Yes. Can I ask a question? Do we have contracts on our docket and EDOC? I think we do. Mm -hmm. I don't and then they wouldn't they are, but they would have to be phased out. But it'll take them three years to get this up and running. So about 18 months before they got, got everything converted. Uh, uh, the other one, EDOC had said six months. I had given Ram a six-month deal, which it's it's... It's just not possible. 
uh, with them, all the information we have is just it's just not possible. Uh, so now this does or does not link to our Tyler system. Currently, it does not. But it, uh, it they're in beta process of converting it, so that there is going to be an opportunity. At, at, at the beta process? Mm -hmm. Correct. That there currently is going to be an opportunity to to have that tied in, so that it would be one system. It's, it's, it's Tyler and Odyssey are, are the same company. Same company. Mm -hmm. Correct. Same company. Where Odyssey is called Odyssey. Same company, but they don't talk to each other. Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. But they're for uh, what? Two hundred thousand when they get it paid? No, it's, it's <laughs> not going <laughs> to. The thing is, the thing is, though, that EDOC and IDOC to be let on the Tyler system is probably going to be. Oh, I don't know what happened. And Odyssey, because they are both, they're the same damn company. Uh, the the the, ch the chances of that happening are extremely high. They are, and it's, it's one of their selling points. So they they are aware of it. It is a goal of them to uh, build up that conversion. And since the judge is here now, if you wouldn't mind. Would you mind, Judge? Come on up. Come on. <laughs> I, I was telling him a little while ago that I spoke with you. Uh, we're on Odyssey right now. You, like, you timed it. I don't know whether you got a text message. Yeah. Or <laughs> I just saw somebody, and I'm sorry. I'm like, I know how important it is. And you're talking now. That's <laughs> certainly important to the county. And uh, Visiting on Odyssey, I think the concerns were that who is going to make sure that everybody's including. I think the conversation when you had this morning, it's all public information. It must be inputted. Mm -hmm. And I visited with Matt also this morning. It isn't like any one, one group or one judge or, or one office can block anything anyway. Uh, we have the capabilities of, of making sure that doesn't happen through the program itself. But the overseeing it, uh, commissioners have a you know, a little bit of heartache with, with who would oversee it. Uh, the conversation this morning also was, you know, probably needs to be somebody a little bit higher up on the food chain. Okay. So you're the district judge and you're also the longest standing district judge come January 1st. So you would be it. Hey. Very happy to take it on. Uh, I know it's an important endeavor. It's uh, your leadership in this particular vein is going to send a lot of signals out and it'll be a unified system. I'll work with the county attorney as well to make sure that, you know, we have everything, you know, correct. And uh, the beauty of it is that everybody will be able to communicate across the board. And you know how it is with the, the system. The, the bigger it is, the more important communication becomes. And uh, so I'll be happy to take it on. And, uh, I'm committed. I'm invested. My concern is, the you know, we've had this conversation. We yes, certainly have programs where... People are not sharing information, even though they have the ability to share information, and it kind of defeats the whole purpose of, of spending the kind of money we're talking about spending. It. If the information is not correct and shared, and, and the only reason Tyler works is because Matt and them manage the program to make sure everybody uses it correctly. Mm -hmm. And so somebody needs to manage this okay. to make sure it is used correctly and, and done what's supposed to happen and aren't trying to do things that they're not supposed to be doing. It, it does build in an accountability, commissioner. Yes. And that's what we all need. And uh, we'll have people looking over their shoulder. And I think that's important for everyone to understand. How are we going to fund it, Matt? <laughs> that's Thank you, sir. Did, there is a, they are offering a three-year in-house financing. I can relook at those rates. I believe it's in the high twos or yeah, what do we threes? have right now? We set aside money for some things. We set aside we the court. Last year, y'all set aside four hundred thousand dollars. The court did last year. This year, y'all set y'all set aside another five hundred thousand dollars. We actually have nine hundred thousand dollars for IT. Uh, whether we went with this one or didn't go with this one, uh, so we're a little bit short. Uh, we could use some of the money. But then we're only talking about financing the last portion over three years. Yes. Sir. If you want to finance the last portion over three years, we can look at that. Or, or if you just year, want to. I don't mean this year, next year. Right. Or if you just want to work in a cash payment in next year's budget to because it is not going to be due. All of it's not going to be due until final implementation. Which gives you a year and a half. A year and a half. Which would put us next year. Yeah, I'd put us at the end of next, next fiscal year. year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the remainder can be budgeted. So the just money is already budgeted at nine hundred thousand. Correct. In the budget. 
Correct. Four days. Correct. And that'll put us short three hundred. Four to, to three or four million. Correct. Four hundred thousand that we would have to come up with next year. But if we wanted to, we could extend that over three years at a hundred thousand a year, hundred and twenty if we needed to. If you needed to, correct. Or you could do it right now yeah. if you wanted to. And I guess the decision right now would be is okay, let's do it or don't do it, but if we're gonna do it, we could still pay it out. Not next not the next fiscal year if we just wanted one lump sum or pay it out. The next either the three over the next three years, pay out the remainder or one lump sum. Not this fiscal year, not the following, but the following. All right, I'll make a motion to we'll move forward without a seat. Can you talk about the executive session? You want to talk about executive session? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll withdraw my motion. Yeah, okay. It's going to be a big deal. Okay. 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 That'll work. We'll go back to, uh, to item 23, the tax note certificate of obligation. Uh, we figured out how to do Odyssey if we go to do it. So my numbers were back at uh, $3,591,000 for the 1.7, 730 for the dozer, the 461 for the radios, and the $700,000 for paving. Is there anything else that the, and again, we're not deciding whether we're going to do a tax note or do a certificate of obligation. We're just trying to put the numbers together so we can come back with a with some type of plan for the court for them to figure out how y'all are going to, for y'all to figure out how we're going to work this. Is there anything else in there that we would need to tell Mr. Villasenor? Uh, are y'all okay with those numbers? I'm fine with those numbers. Sure? Yeah, sure. Seven hundred thousand for paving for what? The equipment. Uh, Seven hundred thousand dollars for paving equipment. New paving equipment. We might as well have this discussion now. The, the problem is, is we can't get access to it. We've been trying for eight months to get a laydown machine back from you, and we haven't had the ability to. Well, man. Yes, you've had it. We've asked. I got it for precinct two. I didn't have it. Don't start. Metro one? Isn't that right? I got it from you? Yeah, I have it. Precinct three had it, then you had it for about a month or so, and I just got it. Well, you didn't just got it. I, I just got to get it about three March. weeks ago. The, the conversation right now, though, would be there's a seven hundred thousand dollars for new paving equipment. At some point, we will need to buy new paving equipment. Are y'all okay with Mr. Olivia Senor coming down and presenting us with a plan to finance the projects that we just set forward? I'm fine. I'm okay with it. Are you okay with it? Yes. Yeah, I'm yeah. okay. <laughs> Um, okay. Lost for the hell out of that. That number, Matt, would go right around 300, 3.6 million. And then we'll, what we'll do is we'll we'll get with Mr. Villasenor and see if he can come down in January. And then we'll, I think the conversation we had was with different type of notes dependent on the life of different equipment. Mm -hmm. And then we'll bring it back to the court and then the court will decide. Uh, Exactly what if we're doing a tax note or certificate of obligations, but at least we'll lay out plans for for the court to, for the court to decide on. Okay, so when was spending going to start? Yes. Uh, we have items on here uh, later on in, in the agenda, but the let's do dozers first. Uh, mm -hmm. Dozers, we will uh, need to buy them now. Okay. okay, so if you're asking when spending going to start, the spending would start, how long, when will they be here? Pinky and told us 90 days, 90 days or so. Yeah, the whole cat said about 10 to 13 weeks is their lead time right now. So a little 90 to 45 days. Yeah. Or 90 to 90 to 120 days. Yeah. And then we did the intent to reimburse so we can. Expend funds and then reimburse ourselves when yes, we right. decide what we're going to do. Right. And when do we start spending money on Frontera? I think that's we will start time. spending money on Frontera probably the first week or the, in February. And the front part of that money comes from Tech Stock? Uh, yes. 
But we still we're still no, I mean, we have to fund it up front. Yeah. And, and we've talked about maybe trying to set aside at least uh, one to one point five million dollars mm -hmm. to be able to start funding that to start funding from that. That was a conversation that we had during the budget process. Okay. Right. right. What we can do now is we can uh, go ahead and just start by the three point six million. We'll set up a, a one point seven line yeah, item for three point. Or did you or not? Or did you know, Eleven. Carlos, do you have on Frontera Road what that dollar amount is that we're yes. going to get back from from, uh, <coughs> yes. from the state? And money. well, it's state and federal money. So the total bid amount was 4.8. When in addition to that, we need to have 450,000 no, no. for uh, the total. state. Okay, the state. The, the the money that we're getting. The vast the amount that we have right now is 3.6 million. Okay. So we're on we're on the same page with the dollar amount then. So I guess had you already gotten that? When you said three point six, you'd already got that from Carlos. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we need to start by that or what? That, my understanding is that's been a grant for a long time. No, it has. It's probably already been certified. We didn't know we just recertify it later. Okay. Or now or whenever we want. But we can just go ahead and set up our debt now. We can uh, corral that. So it's, so when the debt does come out, we can just simply just move those expenditures over. And are you yeah, comfortable with those numbers? Mm -hmm. so we're not going to go over those amounts. Mm -hmm. There's okay. enough contingency. There's enough. We're in the project. Five hundred thousand for change orders. Okay. And you're comfortable. You've gone through it. You looked at it. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we've we've gone three or four times through it. It's one of those deals, though. That I mean. Really? <laughs> uh, you, know, uh, you, you add and then you add and then you add and then it's well, like, okay, yeah. I hope this is enough. And we've already added a little bit more because we hope that was enough. So if you're asking if we're absolutely positive, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but we're, you know, we, you know. I just want to make sure we don't get to the end of the project and realize that we're short. Something. Two million? Yeah. yeah, whatever the number is. Uh, I mean, I think we've added all the numbers, and that, that's where we're at right now. Uh, we did add a percentage in for How long do we have to go that we have to issue this debt? I don't know the exact date on that, but it is a long, long time. Before we actually have to issue it because right. of the reimbursement. Right. It is past the time that, that our target date is. Okay. We're going to... So we're not you said this was until the days. six months? Six, uh, eight, eight, to, eight months, eight to nine months, something like that. That's what they're saying. Yeah, six to eight months. Is what so if saying. we wait to later on in the project to issue the debt, can we carry over this in the meantime? We can, yes. simply because it is, is it, it's the early part of... I mean, all of this that we're talking about here. Correct, yes. So that if there is something else, we don't find ourselves... Because we still have three hundred and something thousand and another tax amount for this project. Yes, I think there's two hundred some odd thousand of that left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. We have enough funds to, to cover the majority of this uh, in, in our fund balance and in different uh, different places. Uh, it wouldn't be a problem to cover this, you know, say until March or April because we'll be getting reimbursed on a steady basis by then. But come, I'd say June, we should have a, a we should have a better number. To look I'm at. just concerned that we're going to get into this project and find something that nobody expected. That that's always a risk, and and that's a risk that if it's a short term project, mm -hmm. and we have the ability to take care of it on the front end, that if we do run into that problem. By waiting a little while, we have the ability to readjust whatever numbers we need to readjust the coverage. Right? The only, if not, you know, and what we could do is bring uh, in January. Uh, we can get with you know, just to note some of these projects that for equipment, uh, that whether it be the dozers or whether it be the radios or, or other than the 1.7 million dollars. On some of that stuff that in reality we probably would not do a long-term certificate of obligation and, and one thing that was just brought up we didn't have on that list was election equipment there is some things that we need to look at to replace i think the m100 or the whichever one it was. i don't remember which one it was but okay okay well i mean let's do this uh we'll need to sort of recertify the 3.6 coming in and you feel more comfortable doing that okay right 
And then what else do we need to do to be able to make sure that, that we can fund these projects out of fund balance or, or something? What do we need to do to make sure? Uh, do you need action from the court? Yeah. Well, the action is we want to certify that revenue, whatever the revenue is. is we're up to 3.6, so that's what we're going to pull it from one seven. Okay. What about on our expenditures? It was one seven Frontera, and then the bound, I, I came to three five nine zero like you did. Yeah. Correct. So it's three six. Right. On all the other projects. On the, all the other products. Okay. And just so we'll certify that, and we'll just simply just set it up at one seven Frontera, and we'll go the balance to equipment, and then equipment, then we'll partial it out at that point based on these numbers, and then when the debt is issued. We will move those expenditures over to the uh, and then it will also give us time. He just brought up uh, election equipment. It'll give us time to talk about that also. But it would. Nothing else we can move forward with the, with the ones that we've already said. Right? Correct. And we can add. And Jamie, can you get a? Are you listening, Jamie? <laughs> can I hear you? <laughs> can you do sign language? Okay. Okay. Now can you hear me? Yes. Can you put yes, numbers um, together on that? I I was I'm looking into the question that the judge had the last time I did a presentation, and that is, is there a need or is there a need for someone to buy used equipment, or what would we do with our current equipment? Um, um, they're looking at that for me and see what the possibility of it would be to for someone else to purchase this from us. Um, I don't know if that's a possibility, but we certainly can look into it. And I have, uh, I would like to bring them in the ESMS people. I'd like to bring them in in January so that they can assess what we have and tell us what we need, whether it's replacement or all new or, or what they recommend. I know that our M650 is, is showing wear and tear. And uh, so we would need to look at, I would like to have a, a full assessment of everything we have. But you can do that next so month. We know what we're doing in one. But you can do that next month and get us a number. Or a yes. or something. I don't, uh, I've, I've made that clear to them and I have told them that I'd like to have that as early as possible in January so that we can schedule um, an agenda item and also a presentation from that moment. Okay. Well, let's take care of the three point something. We'll go back to item uh, 12. 12. Will that take care of your. It will. Oh, okay. Yes. So, what do we need to certify here? How much? The 3.6. Okay. I'll make a motion that we certify the revenue of 3.6 from Texta for the uh, Frontier Project. I'm second. We just take that one first, and then we take another one. Okay. Uh, I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton, second Commissioner Flores. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero vote. Matt. Okay, we're going to also certify an additional three point six to be for our capital projects debt twenty twenty one for when it is issued. Right. right. This will enable us to start. I make a motion to certify an additional three point six for the for when it is issued uh, for uh, capital equipment and capital projects. Jenny, did you get that? Jenny, did you get that? You're not talking. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what we said. <laughs> <laughs> I have a motion, Commissioner. Second, Second Commissioner Weston. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero vote. Okay. Uh, we have Dr. Uh, Laura. For allowing on the on the screen, and so if y'all don't mind, we'll go back. We're just jumping everywhere. We're going to go back up to item 17, and we'll probably take care of 17 and 24 all together. But item 17, uh, discussing matters relating to COVID. Uh, Dr. Palau, how are we doing today? Hi. Good morning. I'm good. How are you? Good. Well, we're doing good, except it got scary last night with all the numbers that were where we're climbing. Uh, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, I think everyone has seen that the numbers are not looking good. Uh, actually, in two days, we have the total number of cases that we had last week. Uh, we're seeing the effects of Thanksgiving and uh, holiday gatherings, basically. Um, 
we also seen that in hospitalizations and deaths. I think we've had like almost 10 deaths uh, in December. Uh, it will be mostly elderly and uh, individuals with comorbidities, but still, uh, they were maybe individuals that were just keeping safe until Thanksgiving and holiday gatherings, and then oh, they got sick. So, um, looking at the kiosk num uh, numbers and testing trends, uh, right now the kiosk is the, <coughs> the testing trend that gives us the, the most cases. And basically, one in every six individuals that test are going to be positive. So that's that's a pretty high number. And um, well, yeah, obviously things don't look good right now, and we expect them to get worse with Christmas coming tomorrow, and obviously New Year's. So I think we obviously need to do something about it to try to slow down the spread. Uh, San Antonio right now, I think it's uh, our trauma region, is on the second day of reporting uh, more than 50%, 15% hospitalization. So we're five days to go. Uh, if the things keep steady that way or increase, well, according to that, uh, we would have to go to a lower number of capacity in restaurants and, and bars closing. Uh, so yeah, we're in day two of that. And uh, I don't have the numbers, but I think everyone that has gone to a restaurant or to a bar knows that uh, when you walk in, they look at full capacity. There's not one table that is that is pretty. And if you stick 50 to 60 people in a room, all of them without wearing a mask, uh, there's not a clear way to walk because everybody's walking and then the waiters and are moving around, um, and if you stick all these people in a room without a mask and with poor ventilation, even though may, they may be uh, combined with 60 distance apart, well, obviously the probability of, of uh, infection there is higher. Uh, and also, uh, we see that the restaurants are got, uh, having larger parties of people with tables of 10 or more people, a lot of kids, uh, all the families, birthday parties, so that doesn't help at all. Um, and I know that the vaccine is coming. Uh, right now, uh, the hospital is the one that will receive the vaccine first because of, according to the state requirement, uh, guidelines of phase one, which would be uh, front line uh, of healthcare workers and staff. So the hospital we're gonna, is going to take care of front line uh, workers first, and then we'll move on to phase two and three. Uh, but right now, the only ones that are going to be vaccinated is the uh, hospital staff. And I think they were planning to do it either this week or next week. And the vaccine that we're going to get is the Moderna vaccine. Which one? As for the rest of the tiers, uh, we haven't received instructions for the state yet, so as to when they're going to start receiving it. But from what we know is that the hospitals are the only ones receiving the vaccine right now. And of course, the vaccine is a great uh, solution, but it's going to be a long-term solution. So it's not going to help short-term to what's happening right now with all the cases and the hospitalizations going on. Um, so I don't know if you have any questions. Who's, who's, who's enforcing the, the social distancing, the, the restaurant requirements? Who's doing that? So. That's the problem. So right now we we had several complaints, and when we tried to discuss who is going to enforce it, or what's the adequate way to do this, that's where it all gets lost uh, because everything is in just in the clouds. Uh, we want to issue citations to a bar, and we're still discussing uh, if we had enough evidence to do it or what's the adequate due process to do it. But there's definitely a lot of bars right now and restaurants that we've seen outbreaks in uh, either managers or, or waiters and waitresses, and they're not doing the adequate protocol to control their staff and to avoid infecting the customers. Um, so so I think those issues are, need to be addressed. We're going to need to be. And 
Restaurants or establishments that are accountable for. I mean, we're spending an awful lot of money here, a lot of taxpayers' money to have all of these people that we have that we're paying and we can't get the simple part done of if it's 50%, it's 50%. I mean, I don't understand what's so difficult about that. Commissioner, it's enforcement. And our contact tracers don't enforce. No, I understand, but there's no point in them doing their job if somebody's not going to enforce the other part. And you're 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 absolutely right. The the problem is with enforcement. Uh, you a certain group does it for a little bit and then they take off. Another group does it for a little bit and then they take off. And they don't want no part of it. Last night, what what uh, Laura just said right now, you know, I'm sitting there going through not even the list. I'm sitting there going through text messages and phone calls, and I and we have. Uh, Five, five different restaurants mm -hmm. uh, that have issues. We have one restaurant that was already shut down, as a matter of fact, and they had a scare. And by themselves, they they shut down to go get tested at the beginning. Then they were shut down. And last night, I get text messages from employees that uh, there's three of them that are that are infected. And management is not doing anything. No, I drove by that restaurant. It was completely packed for the last three days. And, and then I have another one that, that we have two more that the actual managers were infected. And we're going to have a conversation with both of them today because one of them, you know, I, I get a phone call last night. The individual said, you know, she's crying because the manager at a at a restaurant tells her that if you don't show up to work, I'm going to fire you. But yet. She's been around the manager that just tested positive for three days at a, at, a, at a time. So she wants to stay home long enough so she can go get tested after, you know. And, and then I'll go back a little bit. People think that I was with, you know, the guy that's infected yesterday. So I need to go get tested today. Don't work like that. If you're, if you're with an individual that is positive yesterday, you going to go get tested today or tomorrow does not do us any good. You got to wait uh, seven to ten days to go get tested. That way we get a more accurate result. Other than you getting negative, and we, we're having that also. But this lady, you know, again, this, this individual needs a job. She's crying, and you know, I don't know what to do because you know, uh, now we're in the third day, and now he's threatening to fire me. You know, but I'm starting to feel sick. So she's trying to do the right thing. She's going to go get tested, and I have an employer threatening to, to go fire him. But the employer was at work, and the employer's a manager. And he tested positive. Yeah, he tested positive. You're so not, by the time you're contact tracing, no, no they they told him to stay home. And then they, we, when they called him back, he stayed home. But it was one of those deals, you know. Yeah, he's going to throw the F word out there, but they don't pay attention. I mean, they just don't. Pay attention. And, and well, don't we issue them a subpoena? What is it we do? We issue them a citation. A citation. We issue them a citation. So if they show up to work and they have a citation, then what is the? We we, we serve them. You, you get you test positive. You come up on a list. The sheriff goes out and serves them paperwork, uh, telling them what to do. If at the point that they don't comply with that, then we have an opportunity or to, to go serve them with a citation. Uh, we're fixing, and I will tell you, man. You can be forced quarantine. Well, we're going to have to do something, and that's the part that they're more frustrated with. You know, I listen to, to Loudon, I listen to Roland, and, and the other tracers, and then we get phone calls from from medical staff at the hospital. Hell, they're frustrated all hell because we're missing the part of, of, of keeping them the hell home. I mean, it's plain and simple. If the manager or the people that are in the bar or, or the restaurant are not doing what they're supposed to. Turn the damn electricity off. <laughs> it, 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 it's not rocket science. It's, it, these are the rules that are in place by the governor. Either comply with them or we're going to turn the electricity and the water off and we can figure it out. And I'll tell you that, is it Raul from the health department? Raul, right? Laura? Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's, he's been, he's he's been, been trying to... And I think that the problem is that we have tried reasoning with these establishments, try to teach them the adequate protocols, what they should do, and I think that just isn't for a week, and then we keep calling, getting the calls the next week. We, we, need to, we need to set an example, and I hate saying that, but we need to set an example with one, and, you know, we sort of need to turn, I, I think... 
you know, Raul and the city, they're trying to do the right thing. I really, you know, and me and him, we have arguments all the time, but, you know, he's trying to do the right thing. He really is, and I'm going to step up for, to back for him, you know, but we're at the point now that we need to get together with the sheriff's department. We need to get together with the police department, and there's about three of them that we need to shut their, their damn doors for about a week, and then we need to write citations because... Like Laura said, you know, we visit the same restaurants every day. Uh, we got to where we were not picking up where now we're visiting the restaurants, but we go to visit a restaurant yesterday, come to find out the manager and, and three people in the restaurant had it. And they're still open, and I still see people that were amongst the same people. That, you know, uh, so we won't be going to that restaurant anymore, but it, the thing is, the I know about it. I have to be able to put this thing out and thread a, a, a very thin line and... But so we can't publish them? I think you can publish that they uh, the fact that there was an infection, just not who there was. No, but you can say at yes. location X, there was three people that tested positive. Put it to them. Now, now there are... Yeah, there are. Yeah. Now, how many citations have we written? Do you know? Did you hear that? No, I didn't hear that. Anna asked, uh, how many citations have we written? One that I know of. One. We do feel like verbal warnings, verbal warnings and calls. Uh, we haven't issued like a formal citation or like a <coughs> fine issue or a closing issue. Three? I think it's three. Okay. okay. We'll, we'll get that number. I thought it was one. Jerv's thinking three. I, 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 Oh, you mean citations like uh, for quarantine? No, a citation, uh, a violation that you can be fined on. Oh. Okay. Yeah, and I think also that was my second point. I think also the we publish the numbers every day and people interpret them as they wish, but I think it's very important for them to hear from their elected officials. I know that you posted a video this week, but I think it's important to tell them everything, you know, like, uh, we see it in restaurants, we see it in bars, uh, we get bartenders that are positive, we get waiters and waitresses that are positive. Uh, schools have a lot of cases, and thank God that right now they're in break. Uh, we see it all the time, and it's mostly younger people who get sick, and then they come home and infect the, the elderly. A judge, uh, I think that establishments that are not complying with the rules People need to know, you know, that way you can stop from going there and contracting that machine. Okay. And I, I think that people should know. I think that if you're, I'll look into it, but I think what I read was you cannot uh, obviously say who a name. Is, a name, but that this was discovered, uh, it's a public health issue. And so it's sort of like giving them a warning. Uh, you're giving a public a warning. The other business that they complain a lot about is Walmart. You know, uh, Tana or Tanta, say the names. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I think the, you know, I can tell you right now that what I had a problem with right now, correct me if I'm wrong, out of the last night it was Blue Oasis. Oh, yeah. I think that one lit up last night like, uh, you know, just like mm -hmm. a red light. It was like, I think we have three people there that are positive. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and I had other uh, employees. Don't, don't give the number to physicians that they were positive. Well, if you're going to turn me loose, turn me loose. <laughs> 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 that would be easy to another one. Yeah. Well, we had uh, we had people that were positive. We had other uh, uh, employees that were calling last night that were scared. Uh, that what did they do? And I think. Uh, yeah, you're right, Commissioner. Applebee's was another one that I got a phone call on on Friday uh, that yeah. there was issues. And again, it was from employees that were scared. Uh, Sirloin Stockade was another one, right? Who got the rings, rings and rings? Wings it's another one with several cases. Mm -hmm. um, so it's always the rings and rings. had a case as well. What? Which one? Uh, Louder. Buzzard's Roost. Buzzard Roost? Yeah. I thought we had an open bar completely yet. Hmm? I thought we had an open bar completely yet. Did they get their stuff? Open bars are open, and, and it's just strange because we're not 
we're not getting the 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 cases at the open bars that everybody thought we we're going to get. Now we're getting them at the restaurants, and we've been doing real well. But it's like everything else. I, I'm a I'm a waitress, uh, and, and I have it. I show up to work because I'm told that I must show up to work until I go get tested. Well, I went and got tested, but they still want you at work. And these are the phone calls that we were dealing with last night. And now all of a sudden, I've got two more that are positive. Yeah, they don't yeah. understand that when, you, when you're in contact with a positive person with the next step, they think that they'll get tested and wait for the results and then quarantine. Yeah, no, you got to go home. Yeah, but they don't understand. And, and Laura, that's that's something also right now that, that I'm not saying. <laughs> if you come in contact with somebody uh, and you know that he's positive, they tested positive, I mean, the best thing to do is to go home and test uh, seven to ten days after uh, after you had your last contact with this individual. But, the, and, and Anna's just saying the same thing right now, is that you're... They're not doing that. You know that you've been with somebody positive and you continue to go back to work, knowing that, that you've had contact. Uh, yeah. I, I think also we're having the issues, and I said the thing with the spouse. You know, we have a lot of cases that the spouses are positive, or you have a spouse that's positive, the other spouse goes back to work like nothing, thinking, well, I'm okay. I'll go get tested tomorrow. Well, we go and get tested tomorrow, and they're going to be negative, but in six, seven days, now they're positive, but they've been out at their job for six, seven days. Uh, and two of those days, they've been contagious and spreading <coughs> two or three days. So, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, I think... I think that has also become an issue right now, because we're getting so many cases that the COVID team is over, overwhelmed, and I think the sheriff as well. So... Uh, when we get all the cases, we want to call them, all of them, at the same same day. But due to a number of cases, we had to move several uh, cases to the next day. And that same happens for them to be served. And if they are not served, they don't respect quarantine. And, they don't stay at home. And we're at the problem again. And people, you know, we were, we were having the 70s, the 60s, 70s, and 80 case days, you know, uh, June, July, or whatever, after that little lull, and then we got overwhelmed. Uh, right now, uh, you know, we're fixing to put in overtime at the sheriff's office, and I think some of the tracers right now are fixing to put in overtime because of the amount of cases that we have now. Uh, that's something that's going to come back to the court next in January uh, for the simple reason that that. Like you said, Laura, they, 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 we can't keep up right now with the people that we have and the hours that we have. We're going to have to throw more resources at them. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. Um, you know, I don't know. Is Good. There is there a list of these hot spots? On, on the people so that, that they know that if they are exposed, they need to stay home. And uh, if they call us, we and if we know that they are close contacts, we provide work letters for them. So that they can actually quarantine and test at the appropriate time. Uh, I think that the people know that. Uh, Dr. Lara, uh, uh, Commissioner Wardlaw just asked if there's a, a list of these hot spots. Can we put that out? Yeah. Okay. Could we get that list and maybe we'll yeah. we'll do a video yeah. tonight and put them out? The public needs to know. Do you need like just the, the names or the names and the number of cases? Uh, she just told me not to do the. Just give me the names. Okay. Yeah, just keep me out of jail. <laughs> <laughs> at what point they tested positive? Maybe a date? We can give you so many days. What can you tell the Okay. Uh, also, I guess, I guess if we do the, the places, like how recent, uh, if we could give the, the most recent case uh, date, not the name, but the most recent case date, and we put that information out. You could mention earlier schools. Are we having a problem? I mean, I know we're not now because they're out. But are we having any problem? Yes. So. Yeah, we're still seeing a lot of cases in schools. This uh, last week, uh, before the break, we quarantined. On, I think there was two days we quarantined a hundred students. It was. We had a lot, a lot of cases, and most of the cases just said like uh, somebody uh, from a family is the positive, and we gather in like, Thanksgiving or. The boyfriend of a non was positive and we gathered in Thanksgiving. So most of the days in school were due to okay, gatherings. 
the, the, the quarantine of the groups, are you seeing outbreaks in those groups or just the individual? Is, is it spreading throughout the school by people bringing it, I guess, is the question? Um, not so many cases, but I, I guess uh, I think we would have this talk to the school board saying that the school was the safest place for the, the kids. But uh, at the end, the school will be a reflection of the community. There's more cases in the community, there's going to be more cases in school, and more infections in school. So right now, in on-campus con uh, infections was low, but but still, okay. if there are so many cases in the community, well, we're going to see more infections. No, 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 I understand. I'm just wondering if it's spreading throughout the school by they're people doing, coming to school. They're doing, a, they're doing a better job, uh, or not a better job, they're doing a really good job that once the person gets to school, mm -hmm. it's not spreading. Yeah. There are very few cases that are doing that. The problem is though that we're getting a lot of cases that the kids are going to school because they got yeah. somewhere else in their positive, so they're having to send them home. You know, and that's, yeah. that, that's my heartburn with this whole thing. You know, we've been at this for nine months now. Everybody in America knows what they need to do. And, and I don't, as a government official, I don't like to be the dictator trying to tell people what to do. But this isn't about protecting people who want to go do stupid stuff. You want to go get sick and die, that's on you. This isn't about protecting the healthcare workers, the doctors, the teachers, the EMS people that are putting their lives at risk so that you can go do something that you know is not right, it's not fair to those people that they're being put at risk because you refuse to do what you're supposed to do. Those are the people we're trying to protect. It's not the individual who wants to go sit at a bar and get drunk and get COVID because he thinks he's exempt. It's the ones that are putting their lives at risk and those are the ones that people have to take the time to care about. I don't know what happened to this country that we quit caring about the people. I mean, the, the cases at the hospital, those are the numbers I've watched, not the number of positive cases, it's the number of people admitted to hospitals. Those are the trends that I watch because those are the ones that we're risking. You know, we're going to find ourselves right back where we were at before where we can't transport them to San Antonio or San Angelo or anywhere else. And the last time we got in this, luckily we were able to get some more nurses and doctors from the Navy to help us out, but this is becoming a nationwide problem. It doesn't mean we're going to get these people anymore. Yeah, it's and actually, right now, the hospital is uh, it's taking longer for them to accept transfers, so sometimes mm -hmm. they need to stay in in uh, PBRMC for a while before they are sent out. I mean, people need to do what they need to do. Don't force us or the city to have to do what we have to do and then complain because we're invading the privacy and the privileges and your freedoms. Think about your neighbors. Think about the doctors, the nurses, the people that are at risk for this. Those are the people we're trying to protect. It, this is, we know, everybody knows what they need to do. Just do what you need to do. A little more time, I mean, we got a vaccine coming. The end is near. Be patient. You know, I spent Thanksgiving without my family because they were quarantined because it was the right thing to do. They'd been somewhere that was possibly risky. We all make those sacrifices. You know, I, there was kids that didn't get to show this last weekend at the stock show because their parents made a stupid mistake and didn't pay attention to what they were doing and went to places they shouldn't have been. This is, if you don't care about yourself, that's fine. But at least care about these poor nurses and doctors that are putting themselves at risk and these poor waitresses and all these other people. But that's what this is about. This is not about us trying to dictate to everybody what they can and can't do and take away your freedoms. And I'll get off my soapbox. <laughs> Yeah, just a hell of a level of frustration. Well, it's just, it's just ridiculous. It's just, it's just to the point of ridiculous. Well, last night, Rowan was finally called, I think, about 11.30. So I sent, him, I sent you a bunch of text messages, and you didn't respond. That's why I didn't get them. I don't know who you sent them to. Miss <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Lauda, do you have anything else? Um, 
no. I think we will need to work on the enforcement part right now. I think it's something that we need to get together and discuss because it's getting out of hand. And it's very frustrating to listen to all these people that are asking for help and that we're not able to help them because we're not enforcing. And I don't want to shut a business down, but God, they have to work with us a little bit. I mean, they have to protect their employees. They have to, they have to do what they have to do. I mean, it's, 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 it's sad. Yeah. Well, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll see y'all later. Have a Merry Christmas. You too. Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye. Okay. Item 24, uh, <clears throat> we are going to, to uh, apply, if, if the court will be okay with it, to do provide us with a vaccine. Motion to approve. Second. So the county is going to apply on behalf of the health authority. The health authority, do we have the capacity? Are we going to administer it or are we going to? We will administer it. And there, the application gives you a bunch of guidelines. And the one that she wants is the Moderna and not the Pfizer. And we have the refrigerator. We have all that. Yeah, right. Motion to approve. Good. Aren't there two shots to this? What you have, there's five different companies right now that are working on it. There's two doses. Yeah, yeah, there is, but there's five different companies working on a vaccine. The one that has been, the ones that have been approved right now is Pfizer and, uh, Moderna. Moderna. I said in Spanish. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pfizer, there is two doses for each vaccine. Every vaccine requires two doses. It's a time of arc, uh, the span between the time that you get the first dose and the, and the second dose. What we were reading right now is I, the hospital last week, I think, received a letter that this week they were supposed to receive 500 doses. Uh, and and I, have, I haven't talked to Linda yet, but uh, my understanding by what I'm reading is is that <clears throat> if, you, if you get whatever the amount of doses you get, you need to cut it in half because you need to be able to save the other half. Of, the, of what you get to give the second shot. Well, will there be a problem to get people to come back in and get that second shot? That's my question. Well, you know, it's one of those deals. If you get the first shot and you don't get the second shot, what you got doesn't sound <laughs> really good. Uh, the tiers, like they, what they're going to try to do is administer to all of the health care workers at the hospital first, uh, when the hospital gets theirs. Uh, I think CVS and HEB have also applied, uh, and there's four companies can't think of the fourth one, but there's four entities right now that have applied to and have been accepted to hand out the vaccine. One of the questions that, that I've been getting is, uh, are we going to provide a vaccine for inmates? Uh, I do not see them on any tier, uh, but that's a question that I don't know why, but we're getting a lot of phone calls on that. And, you know, like I told them, I thought, you know, I'm not the one making the decision, but if I was, you know, they wouldn't get it because they're isolated. I think the ones that do need to get it first would be our, our naturally, our, our health care workers, and then our first responders. And then at some point, you need to give it to the guards at the, at, at the, you know, at the jails. Uh, but, you know, everybody's right now calling because they want their little group to have it. Yeah. The good thing is that the state and federal governments put out guidelines as to who's going to get it. And, uh, you know, I think they're down, they're going down the right road. Did that answer your question? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Who's overseeing to make sure that these places that do apply do have the correct stuff? The state, the state, the state, state and the federal government. government. Mm -hmm. yeah. The hospital with, with, uh, like with Linda, they needed to make sure that they were able to, to store and house both vaccines, mm -hmm. uh, because like Pfizer is the one that's so many degrees below that's, zero. Yeah, uh, that's it's super 17 cold. 17 degrees Celsius or yeah. 70 degrees Celsius, something ridiculous. Okay. Uh, we have a motion to, to apply for the provider. Who second it? Second, yes. Uh, Mr. Vasquez, all those in favor? Aye. Aye, zero vote. Uh, item 25, execute a six month extension on an MOU with the city of Del Rio for the payment of local health authority contract with <coughs> Council of Edison County Judge to sign. Mm -hmm. mo uh, second. Motion for Mr. Nettleton, second for Mr. Vasquez. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero vote. Uh, 26, we'll come back to it. 
Item 27, recognizing Valverde County Agent Emily Grant for receiving the Outstanding County Agent of the Year Award from the Texas Sheep and Goat Raisers, Commissioner Wardlaw. Uh, Judge, I wish that uh, our county agent, Miss Emily Grant, was here. I'd make a nice speech on her behalf, but what I'd like to do is do an official Commissioner's Court recognition of her receiving this award. This is the most prestigious award that a county agent can receive. Only the best and the brightest receive this award. And uh, I'm a past president of Texas Sheep and Gold Razor, so I can I know what I'm talking about. So, but this is a very distinguished award, and I wish she was here. That's impressive. That is very, impressive. very impressive. We we're lucky to have her as our county agent. Okay. Well, Emily, congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> Item 28, approving LRCA grant submission for Long Memorial Park in Precinct 3. This is a grant that's up to 50000 to the LCFL. It's actually supposed to be LCRA. Um, for us, we, we have that park that we started out there. This would be money that we would use to make those, make improvements in that park. And I'll make a motion to approve to submit the application. Second. Second. And motion Commissioner Nettleton, second Commissioner Wardlaw. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, item 29, setting from Federal Road Project groundbreaking event for January 7th. I will need to post this just to make sure that uh, we're not in violation, and it will be Commissioner Flores out there on Frontera Road. Where at? Well, I think uh, we are talking about the park, the park in that area. Okay. Uh, time? Do we have a time? 930. 930. Okay. Okay. So we don't need any action on this, but just to let the court know. George, uh, George I'd like to uh, say something. Uh, I'm very happy that we're here today announcing the groundbreaking of the Federal Road Project. It's been a long journey, and I uh, want to thank the court for the support. That's it. <laughs> like, like he just stopped. <laughs> you were doing really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's it's, it's all good. Uh, item thirty, uh, authorizing the purchase of a satellite phone for precinct one to be paid out of precinct one operating budget line item and entering into corresponding service agreement. Motion. Second. I have a motion, Commissioner Wardlaw. Second, Commissioner Nettleton. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero vote. Item thirty one, approving the contract with Hunter Industries Ltd. for the construction of Frontera Road. Uh, it's just, I don't know. Motion to approve. Okay. <laughs> it's like damn. It's for four million eight hundred forty eight thousand four hundred ninety six dollars and ninety cents. I have a motion, Commissioner Flores. Second. Second, Commissioner Vasquez. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 5-0 vote. Approving the contract from Millennium Engineers Group, Inc. for geotechnical testing during the construction of Frontera Road Project in the, in the amount of $162,701. And get authorized the judge to sign. Motion to approve. Second. Yeah, judge sign. And the uh, motion, Commissioner Flores. Second, Commissioner Wardlaw. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Zero vote. Item 33, approval to purchase two Hulk cat fire dozer for precinct two and precinct three in the total amount of $730,000 through Sourcewell Government Cooperative Contract Number 032119-CAT to be paid out of an account determined by the Commissioner's Court. Motion to approve. Term. And what was that? Yes. The account. What? Just the one we just set up? Yeah, it's going to be the one we just set up. Do you have a name for it? No, yeah, yeah, okay. 2021. Uh, out of the 20 account 20 just 20 set up by yeah. Commissioner Ford. Second. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Flotis. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those against? 5 0 vote. Item 34, renewing the agreement with Avenue Government Record Services for information, technology, products, software, and related materials for the County Clerk's Office to be paid from County Clerk's Records Management Fund and authorized County Judge to sign. Is this going to be anything in conflict with if we do Odyssey? No, this is the recording okay. of the document, the online recording that the property can, the property recordings can be done through. Okay. So the recordings. Um, Judge, on this, 
uh, I did have the kind interview review it. She made several recommendations. I have uh, submitted those, and they have just sent me the contract with the changes she required. However, if it's approved, I would like for her to take a last look at it and make sure that they put in everything she wanted. Okay. Motion to approve pending review by county attorney. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second. Second, Commissioner Vasquez. All those in favor? All right. All right. Aye, five zero vote. Item 35, renew and virtual training capabilities with skill set agreement in the amount of $2,995. We'd actually uh, I'd make a motion to approve and take out a contingency. Uh, have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Vasquez. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Mm -hmm. 5 0 vote. Item 36, authorizing Sheriff Joe Frank Martinez to purchase the Mediburn, what? Mediburn 30 medical waste incinerator for $35,720 from the CESF grant number 4160101, equipment budget line. Nine. Motion to approve. Very good. I have a motion, Commissioner uh, Flores, second, Commissioner Nettleton. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. 5 0 vote. Did you want to come up? <laughs> 37, ratifying a lease agreement between Valverde County and Michael Andrade for a drive-in rosary that was held yesterday. No. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second. Second. Commissioner Flores, all those in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. Five, zero vote. Item 38, approving a lease agreement between Valverde County and Bobby Paul for the George Paul Memorial Bull Riding. Uh, it's a standard contract that we have every day. What's the end date? It's one of those deals that we can put it in the contract. A motion to approve with all COVID related requirements. Second. I have a motion, Commissioner Allison. Second, Commissioner Flores. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. 5 0 vote. Uh, item 39, approving overtime for precinct personnel for emergency call response. We have done this before, and I think the conversation is what one of them wanted to have is if we were going to do. Uh, Exempt employees, which we've addressed in the points of no, but whatever the full time. Good morning, Judge Commissioner. Um, this conversation, as the judge uh, mentioned, comes up <clears throat> every time we have our precinct um, crews go out either on a fire, a rollover, um, are we paying the, the foreman or not, and what constitutes an emergency? Uh, the auditor okay. and I have had those conversations. Let's answer one thing at a time. Yes, sir. I guess the emergencies that we have talked about uh, when our crews go out has been like fire. Yes, sir. Uh, I think they have been out on a couple accidents. I think that would constitute an emergency. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Anytime you take well, a I, mean, yeah. I would say anything pretty much not related to a normal operation. Okay. Well, that. Can yes, sir. Clarify? Yes. Now, going back to the foreman, so I think the foreman should be exempt from getting any overtime. Okay. Because they're 24-7. They're, they're, they're on call. And that's a conversation that we've had three other times in the court in the past that decided to leave the foreman out of the overtime. Okay. And so I don't know what y'all want to do now, but I got to decide. You should leave it that way. I mean, they're exempt. You put that in a motion? Uh, yes. Second. Do what? Hazard yeah, I mean, they're still out there. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a lot different from, from, you know, going out to fight a fire in the middle of nowhere versus your normal stuff that you have. I have a motion, Commissioner Flores, second Commissioner Wardlaw. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those against? Aye. Four, one. And yes, sir. Thank you. Item 4 is Human Resource Report from November 25th, 2020 through December 23rd, 2020. Oh, they're all okay? Yes, sir, they are. Motion to approve. Our motion, Commissioner Nettleton, second. Second. Commissioner Vasquez, all those in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. 5 0 vote. We'll take a little break and then we'll go into closed session uh, consultation pursuant to Texas Government Code A551.071, parentheses 2, attorney client privilege. B551.071, parenthesis 1, parenthesis A, contemplated litigation. Joe, get everybody to turn back. No. Oh, <laughs> Norton? Wow. Well, <laughs> oh, jeez. Why are we back on that? I'm sorry. 
come out of executive session. We talked a lot. No action taken. We <laughs> just kept on talking. Uh, we'll go back to item 26. Go back to item 26, uh, considering audit fee conversion and account designations. I will make a motion that we move forward with the Odyssey program and make it the program that the county will use for its um, store I'm looking for. I'll second it for discussion. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton, second, Commissioner mm -hmm. Flores. Commissioner Nettleton, Commissioner Flores, on the right hand. Judge, uh, I mean, I know we've been working on this for quite some time, but i just like to know if this is going to work out for the departments. Are they going to comply? Are they going to share information? Or, I mean, I hear different stories of some departments are not willing to share information with other departments. They, they won't. I have no answer. Uh, I think we'll, we're going to wait on that. Uh, but the motion right now stands to move forward. And until we hear other information that we should not. Matt, what would you call Odyssey? A, a data tech IT? Just Odyssey, what's the name? What's the we keep saying Odyssey. Case management software? Is that what we're looking for? Is that what it is? Yes, it's case management, case management software. I will amend my motion. That Odyssey will be the case management software that Alberti County will provide for the use of government. I'll second and accept that. I have a motion, Commissioner Nelson, second Commissioner Flores. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those against? 5-0 vote. Uh, Commissioner's comments? Oranges? Ryan, you want to pull that? That way they know? No. Yeah, let's pull the two 500s. And let's, that way everybody knows. <laughs> He just seems to want it more than everybody. Oh, okay. Are you the last one? Yes. I did want to say, just for the record, um, you know, this this year has been really, really difficult for a lot of employees. It's affected the court, uh, elected officials, department heads, just like it's affected our families. Uh, but our court, and on behalf of me, I want to thank the court, the commissioners, uh, for helping with this. This month has been great for the employees. We've done a lot for them, and we know they've all enjoyed it. All the raffles, all the announcements that we've been making, so I really appreciate that. Thank you. Judge. We're doing something different this year. Usually uh, there's only one 500 or something prize. Uh, this year there's two $500 prizes uh, that were donated. Uh, and we're going to, everybody that, that was left after, everybody that's already been picked, there's people that were left, we're going to pick one 500 from them. That name will will get the 500. He'll, they'll stay out. And then all the other names that were picked, they'll go back in the pot and then we'll pick another 500. For oh, that. Wow. Yeah, something different. Good luck. Good point, whoever it is. Lewis Sowen. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, precinct three. This is Morales. Wow. Congratulations, Mr. Morales. Well deserved. They're all hard work. Everybody's got one more chance, except Morales. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. Maybe we'll go to the top. You're going to do it. Yeah. One of the other ones that don't have five lines. Awesome. The winner is Catherine Adams at the County Library. Wow. Oh, okay. That's too cool. Yeah. Just, and I know this, I'm asking, maybe asking the question, can you send an email with all of them? Oh, yeah, I'll do that. I'm going to do that today. All
Thank you so much. Commissioner, do I have anything? If not, uh, I'll say one thing. Uh, this year's been rough. Uh, but it's been a pleasure working with all of y'all, uh, Anna, and, and everybody else. Uh, it, it's, it's been a pleasure. It's just uh, we can't do it without each other. Thank y'all. Uh, commissioners, again, it, it's we've been through a lot. We've made good decisions, and I, I look forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to answer my question? No, I need to quit. Don't start crying. Uh, but either way. Uh, again, it's been a pleasure, and I look forward to working with y'all next year. Uh, y'all have a Merry Christmas. Everybody out there, y'all have a Merry Christmas. Be safe. Mask up. And, uh, you know, like Commissioner Nelson said earlier, we need to start looking at taking care of ourselves and uh, you know, your, your family. But let's, let's put this into perspective. You know, the mask isn't exactly for you. It's for everybody else around you. But again, uh, have a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, uh, meeting again.